Hello everyone, this is Przemek Hojecki and you're watching my YouTube channel. This episode is a little bit more personal. I want to take you on a journey how I started with uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, because actually my background is in pure mathematics. So I always loved mathematics. I studied it during the school hours, after school. I loved taking part in different competitions. That started in high school when I went to the finals of a mathematical Olympiad. I really spent a lot of, a lot of time with mathemati on mathematics and then I decided to go study mathematics, uh, first at the University of Warsaw, then uh, I slowly moved to, to France. So basically my story is that all, already during the summers, be, before, the, before the university, I studied a lot of mathematics, taking uh, reading books which were actually uh, for years number two, three, four uh, of for university studies, which meant that most of the material that were already uh, during the studies for mathematics, I already knew that. Uh, so that was a matter of time that I decided that actually I can take much more courses than usually is possible uh, because some of the material I already know, so I don't need lectures, I don't need exercises. And actually my, my professors were super helpful with that because I explained to them the situation. Um, the dean of the department also allowed me to take more advanced courses during my first year. So in total, during my first two years, I basically completed everything which was interesting to me uh, from the whole curriculum of studies, meaning I took courses both with students uh, from the first year as well as from the last year even with with graduate students with, on a master on a phd program uh, yeah so that was fun i was basically uh, studying mathematics 12 to 14 hours per day every day weekends included uh, i have multiple um, overlapped courses each day uh, that was really fun but then after two years uh, one of the professors actually approached me and said that it's better to go away so that I get exposure to more diversified uh, mathematical culture, to study internationally. And uh, she proposed to me uh, to go to France. Uh, she proposed me to go to France. Uh, so, so I went to Ecole Polytechnique, I went there uh, for a master. Uh, and that was two fantastic years. So I went for MM, but I already do so M1, but I already were doing courses for the last year of master during my M1. Uh, so basically, I spent two years doing master at the Polytechnique, but then still, uh, that was mostly about doing research. Uh, most of the time, I decided to go out of the courses this time uh, because I had so many courses in Poland where I started that, uh, yeah, I, I decided that it's much better to actually do research because I wanted to be a researcher, I want to spend my life with mathematics. That was the plan at the time. So. I actually find a couple of mentors uh, in Paris uh, and also internationally. I was already going to different conferences back then, uh, so that, that was fun. I was always almost the youngest at those conferences. Uh, and basically I stayed in Paris for five years because from Ecole Polytechnique I moved to Paris 6, where, uh, so University Pierre at Marie Curie, where my PhD advisor was and we, I started a PhD with him on Langlands program, that's a mixture of number theory, algebraic geometry and representation theory and basically that took me three years to, to complete so all together I spent five years in France uh, and still I was very much into mathematics and I never thought about going outside of mathematics even though on the side I tried different funny things like writing books, I was already writing or like small computer science projects uh, which were supposed to be funny websites and try to monetize them in a way. Now, I was doing that uh, during the weekends or like hiring people to do that for me. But still, I was very far away from doing pure da data science machine learning. So then, after PhD in Paris, I went to Oxford uh, for a research fellow, so for a postdoc. So I was a lecturer, I teached a little bit, but most of the time I was doing research on my own and I spent two years at Oxford, which was really a fantastic experience. Uh, I really enjoyed the time there. I really enjoyed the freedom that I get. Uh, but then I already started to think that I don't want to spend my whole life in mathematics or not, or not at least in this domain of mathematics because the world is so fascinating and there are so many things to see, to understand that 
I want to expand my horizons, I want to see and try to understand many different, more complicated stuff. And this is basically how AI started to come into my place because that was basically the time when I learned about the Voyevodsky results uh, on trying to formalize mathematics, trying to make it ready for automatization, for automation. Uh, so those questions on the how to automate different parts of mathematics was really important to me because uh, Langland's program, so my domain of expertise, uh, is really technical and there are really, uh, I guess, like two to three hundred people around the world who can um, understand all the proofs and, and go in detail with all the material in the domain, uh, which means that the peer review process and the process of doing the Langan's program of doing mathematics itself is really long because you don't have to only complete the paper, you don't only have to prove the, prove the results you want to prove, but also you need to write that in the paper and send it to a publication and there are only a couple of colleagues who can actually say whether what you did uh, is good or not, whether that's interesting um, and verify the correctness of the proof. Uh, so I was starting to think, okay, how can we do tools which would help mathematicians along the, the way and how that could fasten the, the process of doing mathematics, how, how we can make the process of doing mathematics much better, uh, much faster uh, and more interesting also because uh, there is also always this part of doing the mathematics that you have to write all the tedious details uh, do the tiny computations, uh, which were really some, sometimes frustrating when you're thinking you're at the end of the proof, you already know the whole strategy for the proof, but then something small is missing and uh, there are really like weeks or, or months are going by and you have no progress. So I was thinking about that, those frustrations, those situations and how to ameliorate that. So basically this is how I went into formalized mathematics for the first time and then I started to reading more about data science, machine learning, deep learning. So, so that was back at Oxford and basically that was the full circle because when I started studying at the University of Warsaw there, are ma there were many of my colleagues who were top-notch computer scientists uh, and they had like very successful careers in computer science uh, either doing their own business or going to Google, Facebook, Microsoft or like OpenAI, DeepMind, so one of those research institutions. So I have exposure to all, all the stuff those people were doing. So that was really interesting. Uh, I started reaching out to some of them, asking questions, asking what should I read, what should I do? Uh, and it became clear that there's definitely this gap in uh, understanding and logic in machine learning. Uh, and I decided to pursue that. So that was my first, uh, first exposure to real research in machine learning. I have written my first very short paper called Deep Algebra, which is still on the archive, you can see that. Then I gave a couple, a couple of talks on that subject and it started like that. So it started with a research paper, it started with a program that I had in my head and only then I realized that it's really ambitious and I would probably need like 20-30 years to complete the whole thing. Uh, but it was really fascinating and it really fascinates me to this point. So back then, after two years at Oxford, Oxford, my contract finished, I decided to come back to Warsaw, uh, to Poland, because I spent seven years abroad uh, and do my uh, and try to do both research and my own business in AI. Uh, so I was then dividing my time between pure mathematics and machine learning and only after three years from that, so right now, like that, that's like a very recent situation. From this September, I decided I want to go all in into business and do machine learning and deep learning in business. Also doing research, but uh, doing research in a very practical way where I know I can apply that to the real world uh, and do something really interesting. So that was an interesting journey for me to start uh, with AI because I went from this really highly technical domain of mathematics uh, into a little bit less technical domain of mathematics uh, into deep learning AI. So that's like most of the people are doing the opposite way of doing some, from something really much less complicated like coding in Python to getting more and more structure, more mathematics learning along the way. Um, but and, and anyway is good uh, if you can arrive at your goal. Uh, so in the end, uh, I went all into business uh, and along the way I also had a couple of startups which, which failed, but uh, one of them was at the Google campus, the other was uh, 
uh, registered in incorporated in Canada, went through a Creative Distraction Lab in Canada, uh, and uh, we were uh, together with my co-founder listed for Forbes 30 under 30 in Poland. So there are a couple of good things that happened along the way, even if that was a, a bitter failure at the end. Uh, I learned a lot along the way. I learned a lot about entrepreneurship, and that, that was really fascinating because right now I know that I want to do both research and really business oriented things uh, so that I can monetize my projects. I can do something which is quite practical, but still very intellectually challenging. And you can find both in the real world because when I was living academia, I had this inner fear, uh, which is very actually widespread in academia that the only challenges are in academia. Uh, when you're doing PhD, when you're a professor, that's the only way uh, you can really be intellectually challenged. And that's simply not true, especially right now in machine learning, deep learning, which is more, most of the interesting stuff is happening at the companies, is happening in business. Um, that's probably also the case with biology and biological research. There are many domains where actually doing research is more, interested, in more, is more interesting in business uh, than it is in academia. Yeah, so that's my story. If you have any more questions, please write them below. Uh, I'd be happy to answer anything. Uh, and please subscribe to my channel and see you in the next episode. Thank you.